Hello, this is Joanne of Design Inc. Co. And this is the third of a series of short videos about creating joinery or millwork in SketchUp. So I'm taking you step by step through the process of drawing up a simple wardrobe in SketchUp. So feel free to follow along and uh, you can use any model that you have. The principles are still the same. So in the last video, we took this elevation drawing and we turned it into a 3D model. In, we created gaps to make it look more realistic and we, we push and pulled the cupboard doors to give it a little bit of shadow. So you can see this is our inspiration image. We've created this uh, toe kick, we've created a frame and now what we would like to do is decorate the outside so we can present it to our client. Now, the intention in the long term may be to uh, apply a texture that can be rendered. But for the moment, we are just doing a concept uh, model. So having all the elements of a texture aren't necessary so we're really just going to download a jpeg so i like to use this site at the moment it's my favorite i used to use quite a lot of of this site which is sketchup tech uh, however they're, they're quite limited they're more architectural um, so it can be quite difficult to find exactly what you would like if you go into uh, wood, for example, you'll find cracking paint and wood. So you could go into fine wood and you might find um, a little bit of a few things here that might be of interest. Um, so you can see there's chestnut wood. Um, I find these to be a little bit boring, uh, but, but you know, it depends on what, what uh, you would like. So at the moment, my favorite is these architectures, which is a material editor. There actually is a, a SketchUp extension, which you can download, and it is a paid account, but I actually am finding the uh, textures actually be quite interesting. And then particularly when you're going back into rendering, the textures, bump maps and hatches are actually quite helpful. So I found this walnut texture here, and I've downloaded the JPEG, and obviously you can preview the scale so it's quite a nice nice image and so I've downloaded it and I've put it into my downloads loads folder then I hop back into SketchUp Pro and if we go and look at the the color we can create a new texture so that will give us a file we can find our walnut textures and we could open that and then we can put in the actual dimensions. So you'll see here, it actually lists the dimensions that the image is in. And so it's good to, to keep to that um, set of dimensions. So we're just going to press OK. And we have the texture created here. So in order to apply the texture, the most important thing that we're going to do is go into our model. And we want to actually resize, and this can be quite fiddly, but we want to actually paint it on each of these. So we don't want to just go out here and hit the paint bucket tool and just apply it. You can see here, this is not a very good um, result. So let's just go out of that. So we want to actually be a little bit more fiddly, go into the, and, and apply it there. Now, you can see here you've got this blue box and, and it's kind of grayed out. So this is where you um, go out of the thing and make sure that you've, you get rid of that blue line. So before we had this blue line here, and now if you click on it once, you uh, I mean right click on it once, you will find that you get this. So what we would like is this position texture. And you can see, actually, it's it's turned out to be quite large. So we might want to just bring it in a little bit. 
and we might also want to to just adjust it so that we get the kind of look that we're going for and I think that looks pretty good okay so essentially we have to do that to everything so again we go into our paint bucket tool and then we hit it there and then this is where we right click we go into position image again we're going to turn it around and we're going to get it to kind of look just like um, the one before let's keep it straight so that doesn't look too bad okay and then we continue doing this so I'll, I'll continue doing this and you can just watch along and uh, and then we'll so we'll speed up this part Now on these smaller bits, it's less important to resize the textures and it might take you a little little bit of time to go through um, to go through this model and just adjust anything that is that might be visible. So you might have to go right into there and find all those little white pieces and it can be a little bit fiddly. It's not probably necessary to overthink it um, you can just have a quick look at both sides obviously because if you are going within the model you might um, be looking at something from a different angle so it's good to not have to stop what you do and then re redo this particularly when you might be already in it have placed this within your SketchUp model but you can see here you can just move your paint bucket around grab the bits that are white and repaint all of these little edges that may have so let's have a look now so you can see here it actually looks pretty good definitely see the shadows of uh, things you can see the timber texture here if you want to make it bigger or smaller you can change it and again down here i've left the grain going horizontally not vertically but as you can see in the inspiration image the the grain is actually going it's quite a strong grain and it's going uh, vertically so I've tried to maintain that in in the look of this so you can see how far we've actually come to here now this is where we could uh, bring in a handle from the 3d warehouse and attach it to our so let's uh, let's do that so let's go into the 3d warehouse and let's find a handle so I quite like this is an Australian brand and so we just look at the this Isla pool so let's just download this into our will load it directly in the model now when when a little bit of a, a note when you are downloading something like these models in the th from the 3d warehouse just be sometimes people create them in larger models then you might have all this extra geometry that you bring into a model that you don't actually really need and uh, so you need to be just careful that when you're bringing something in like this that you are going to you're just bringing in that particular thing so the main trick and it took me ages to work out this but this is absolutely the easiest way for, for every every kind of rotating and look you can see here I actually didn't um, go in and paint this so let's just let's just do do this bit and just paint these little edges here um, so not that we're going to ever probably look at it from the top 
but uh, I mean I guess you could go even underneath here and paint those but I don't think it's necessary so let's just get out so here we have there and the best way to actually manipulate a model like this is to use the move tool so when we use the move tool what we're, we're actually looking for is those little red crosses that sometimes you see so we'll just wait for the model to catch up so you can see here with the move tool when I hover over it I can actually see these red crosses so what I would like to do is I have to twist this up so let's go back and we can see here and this is where we can actually keep this without using the rotate so now I've I've got it to this side and I'm going to grab it from this point here so you can see the little cursor is right on that point and I'm going to use that point to move my pull just on the edge here so and we'll just see where where it's connected to so you can see here this is probably a similar place so let's just say it's going to be the tape measure we're going to do it about about a meter so we'll just keep that there and so all we have to do is again use the move tool and the option key and just bring it in to the points and again we do we do another one here and this is actually pretty easy so and then the la last one for this size is you can see it's picking up the red we'll go over here and you can see it's not quite right so let's just move that back there and we can move this to that edge so let's just select it move it to that edge there oops so move that looks not quite right so you can see here just a little bit of adjustment so we just move it to that edge in the group and that looks good now if we want to do the mirror image we can do this in a in a few few different ways but I actually just like to move a copy across then I'm going to just move it like this and then I'm going to make sure that I grab this and move it in line here we can go right in and make sure that it is in line and there we go and then we can come in and again we use the option is move oops let's just move this across So I'm just using the M tool, we're going to make a copy. You can see the little plus button here and we are just going to make sure that it is on the edge and then we're going to hit option again. So this door here, so we're going, it's going to open in two spaces. Actually, this is not what I want. I want to put that there. So so if this door is going to open like this, this door can open there. We can move this over to this side here. So let's just move it. So the best thing to do is really get in there and, and grab it in here and then just keep it on the red axis. And then we can go in here and then just do any adjustment that we would like to do. Oops, there. So again, we'll go in there and we'll grab that and then just move it here. Okay. And so I think we're pretty good to go. So here we've got these doors coming out there, these doors coming out there. We don't need that one, so we'll just delete it and I think we're good to go. So you can see here, now, I mean, it's up to you whether you want to kind of have a, a roll 
a whole line or whether you think this is unbalanced. Um, but again, you know, this is something that, that's quite useful to do because it gives your client an idea of, of kind of what they, they would require.